You ready for the video? I'm ready. Present practice. What is vibing? This is Vish and? Sheena. And today we'll be responding to Sudgur's video on? How to move on after a breakup. So today I'm here with Sheena. Want to introduce yourself? Yeah, thanks Vish. My name is Sheena and I am a dating coach and yoga teacher here in Austin, Texas. Awesome. And have you heard of Sudgur before? I have. What do you know about him? I know that he is very wise and uses mindfulness to explain many of the different phenomena that we go through as human beings. Okay, sweet. As a dating coach, you know, how common are breakups that you see nowadays? Oh my gosh, so common. <laughs> they happen, um, unfortunately, more than we think they would. Uh, amongst young people especially and in a time where everything is sort of up in the air due to COVID and other external factors, breakups are just inevitable. So this video should hopefully be helpful. Well, let's uh, watch and learn. Sounds good. Your body is carrying a very complex mechanism of memory. You think it is not gathering memory with whatever you touch and feel and relate with. If you create a lot of contradictory memory in your system, you will see, life will tell later that you will have everything but you feel like you have nothing because it's confused. My name is Azim. I'm a first year student uh, pursuing BCom honors. So uh, basically we all know that uh, at this age we get into a relationship, then we broke up. Uh, so there was one of my friend uh, recently who broke up and he was like, he asked me to give him some advice on how to move on and how to cope up with things. So being of the same age, I cannot advise him because I don't know how to move on. So my question is that how to move on after that situation? Well, somebody else has moved on. Even if you stay in the same place, distance will happen. <laughs> See, let us understand this in terms of life, not in terms of trend, not in terms of morality, not in terms of right and wrong, but in terms of life. When I say in terms of life, Azim, do you remember how your great, 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 ten generations ago, how your grandfather looked like? No. No. But his nose is sitting on your face. Yes, yes or no? Yes. Yes. So is it true that your body has a tremendous amount of memory? Hmm? Yes. This memory is on many different levels. There is an evolutionary memory, there is a genetic memory, there is a karmic memory, there are conscious levels of memory and unconscious levels of memories, articulate and inarticulate levels of memories. But if your great-grandfather's nose has to sit on your face, obviously your body is carrying a very complex mechanism of memory, isn't it? Yes. So this body, if it is capable of such a complex sense of memory, you think it is not gathering memory with whatever you touch and feel and relate with? You yeah. think or… you think so or no? Yes. It does. So it is gathering an enormous amount of memory. This is how you know. See, how to go up the steps, how to go down the steps, it looks very simple. But it's not simple, it's very complex. Your body has to remember. Otherwise, it cannot go up and go down so simply. Well, today the sports people are talking about muscle memory, building memory into their system so that the sport can be executed at a certain level of efficiency. So this is not only for sport, this is not only for specific activity. Every day you are imbibing so much memory, and this memory, if there is a certain kind of congruence to this memory, if there's a certain kind of cohesiveness to this memory, 
this memory will become productive. If there is a certain level of chaos to this memory, then you may know everything, but this memory will work against you because it's contradictory and conflicting within itself. When you say a relationship and when your friend asks you this question, the question itself is coming because it matters, isn't it? Yes. If you didn't matter, you could have just forgotten about it and gone on like old pair of shoes. But it matters because you invested your thought, your emotion and maybe even your body. So, uh, Sheena, what do you think so far after watching this? So many things. I think first and foremost, Sadhguru is right in that when we break up with somebody, our body holds on to the memory of that person. And he also said something else that I really agree with, which is that those memories are conflicting because they are far away and distant in the past. And while we long for them, they aren't necessarily all good memories. Some of them are bad. And so you have this, this sort of fight and flight where your body wants to go back to those memories, to the past, but we have to stay present, right, and keep moving forward. And so it's like our mind wants to go this way, but our body wants to go this way. And the more that we can accept and understand that that breakup is just a memory, the more that we can sink body and mind to keep moving forward. I love that. That was really cool how you connected that to the memory and it definitely seems like memory is, is such a big theme right now in this video. And uh, yeah, with regards to the conflicting uh, different, I guess, memories that you just, just described, I've also been just reflecting on this piece which is like realizing the difference between your thought, your emotions, your heart, your intuition, your consciousness, there are all these different entities that can be conflicting at times, right? Due to the different memories that are present amongst the different areas. So I don't have an answer, but definitely seems like there's a lot to explore here. Was there anything else that you wanted to add to the video so far? I would just say that, especially in the dating world, I see people who have recently gone through a breakup that are really gung-ho on reflecting on the good memories, right? So when a relationship ends, we really only miss the good parts and we tend to forget the bad parts. It's just human nature in everything. So I would recommend to someone who is going through a breakup to try and ground yourself in the exercise that there aren't just good memories, there are also bad ones too. And that just because you're remembering the good ones doesn't mean that the relationship was all good and that it shouldn't have ended. Amazingly put. And the other thing I've learned just from, I guess, what you said as well as in general with this journey is to not be attached, right, to anything, whether it's good or bad. Uh, Kobe Bryant actually talks about it, which is really just taking things in an equanimous way, if I'm pronouncing that word right, uh, because the more you treat everything, whether it's quote-unquote good or quote-unquote bad, as just the way it is, then you will naturally create that distance from that whatever it is. So, yeah, thank you so much again for sharing. Let's get back to the video. Sounds good. Once you've invested these three things, there is a profound sense of memory about that. If you create a lot of contradictory memory in your system, you will see life will tell later that you will have everything but you feel like you have nothing because it's confused and it's joyless, it doesn't have exuberance. It's very important young people understand the mechanism of what you have been given. If this was just True. a lump of flesh, you could have done whatever the hell you want with it. But this is a very sophisticated machine. If you treat it sensitively, it can do things in a phenomenal way. Otherwise, it'll do mediocre things. Suppose I gave you, let's say you know nothing about computers. I gave you, let's say, Apple Air. Have you seen this model? Yeah. Very thin and short. So tech savvy. I gave you this, but you don't know what it is. You took it home and started chopping cucumbers. It works very well. <laughs> it works very well. But isn't it a tragedy that you're using a computer to chop cucumber? Nothing wrong with a cucumber, but something definitely wrong with you, isn't it? Yes. Hello? Yes. Something very fundamentally wrong with you 
when you do not understand the significance of what you have on your hands, all significant things will go waste. So, before not just other human beings, I'm saying before you touch, involve yourself in anything, you must see what is the level of involvement you wish, you must see where do you want to take this, you must also see what are the different impacts it will have upon you, whether this will work well for this life or work against this life, you must consider. Otherwise, you will become a loose life. Loose, I'm not using the word loose in terms of morality, I'm just talking about loose in terms of not able to fulfill the direction in which you wish to go in your life. Bringing some integrity to this, Intellectual integrity, emotional integrity and physical integrity to your life is very, very important. Well, beyond that, if something goes wrong, you just have to understand when you came alone, when you were born, you came alone and when you die, you will go alone. So Sheena, what do you think after watching the whole video now? Yeah, you know, it's um, <laughs> Sadhguru hits the nail on the head when he says, we come into this life alone and we die alone. and as profound and uh, possibly even saddening as that sounds, it's true. And what he says about the integrity of the body, about always constantly having to bring yourself back into your body, which is your vehicle, understanding that you have value and integrity. It is a constant practice, right? Especially after a breakup, what he says about after a breakup, maybe not feeling in your body, right? Maybe not living up to your own expectations of yourself because you're in this low energy, low vibration, not feeling your best, not valuing yourself. It is a constant practice to be able to tell yourself, yes, I am a value. Yes, just because this bad thing happened to me doesn't mean that I can't continue to live up to my expectations of myself, right? And that if I don't do that for me, no one else will. You are the only person that can tell you where to go after a breakup. You can stay here or you can continue to propel forward. And that propelling forward is only going to come from your own mindfulness of where you notice your thoughts going, where you notice your brain going back to those memories. And so it is a constant, again, that's why meditation and mindfulness is called practice, right? It is especially important to be mindful after a breakup so that you're not undervaluing yourself. Thank you so much for sharing that. Clearly, she is a dating coach, and so she has some really valuable points there. And uh, yeah, no, it really is it's interesting. And uh, I think it's really just going, going back to the attachment that tends to be present. It's a memory that's really present, that's creating the attachment, right, to that breakup, for instance. What I will say is that, like, what I will say is that it's important to not ignore, for example, the breakups and completely forget, because it is a part of what made you who you are, right, in terms of uh, your behavior as well as your experiences and so on. So it's important to, like you said, value, I would say, that previous relationship, but not to be attached and uh, to very simply just focus on yourself. I'm no dating coach here, so I'm just sharing what resonates within me, but focus on yourself. Um, always have, I think the key word that you'd mentioned which really resonated within me was practice. Having a practice, a dedicated daily practice that is meant to ground you, whether it's meditation, yoga, a sport, anything, right? Having something which is your go-to, will, that will always be your outlet, that will always allow for an expression. These are really important things to have regardless of whether you are in a relationship or you're not in a relationship. And as I've learned from Sadhguru himself, he says it in a really cool and simple way, which is whether people that are in relationships suffer, people that are not in relationships suffer, people with kids suffer, people without kids suffer, people with jobs suffer, people without jobs suffer. So it's not even the external that is to blame at your issue or your emotional state. It's literally just an internal thing at the end. So when you truly realize that and realize how it is in your control, then naturally I think these breakups will stop affecting you at least as much. What do you think? 
Absolutely, I agree. And you know, it, this goes for any type of relationship. It can be a friendship, it can be uh, a business relationship, right? Especially when we're young throughout our 20s and even 30s, um, relationships are gonna come and go and that's just a part of life. What we can do is continue to stay grounded in ourselves and like Vish said, f find a practice, find something that's going to keep you in your body regardless of what type of person comes and goes into your life. And I think that is really the key factor because if and when that person leaves, you still have yourself. And that's the most important thing. Amazing. And again, really well put again. Thank you so much for uh, sharing this advice. And hopefully this reaction, whether it was what Sadhguru had to say or Sheen had to share, as well as some of the inputs that I had, was uh, able to resonate within you. And if you have any other questions or comments about what we've said, don't hesitate to comment down below. And before I let y'all go, where can they find you, Sheena? Yeah, you guys can find me on Instagram. I'm at that dating coach, and you can find me on TikTok as well. I post really helpful videos on there. Same thing at that dating coach. Super cool. She has some really nice content, and all of her stuff will be down below. And with that, make a great day, take it joyfully, and stay conscious. conscious. You did great.